my extreme delight to introduce you to London Fletcher. And I owe her a good one because about a year and a half ago, she introduced me at a Snake River event. And she recalled when we met, which was, I don't know, about six years ago. And she was gay high. And Joel brought her to the screening of Blackfish. And after the, after the movie, she asked me, does anyone know what the orcas are telling each other? And that went way beyond Blackfish right there. I was impressed with the question. That was a good one. But I had to say, I don't know. And I don't think anybody knows. I believe that's going to be up to the next generation of cetologists to figure that out. And lo and behold, London is the next generation of cetologists. Right there. She's a member of the Society for Marine Mammalogy, and she has her own nonprofit organization dedicated to marine mammal research. So now you're going to get up close and personal and dive into the waters with New Zealand leopard seals and see London's research. I'd just like to start off this presentation by thanking Howard and thanking everybody here and who's volunteered with the Orca Network because it's really an honor to be speaking here right now because Ways of Wales is my very first whale symposium that I ever attended. So that I'm finally getting to speak and present to all of you is really great. So I am going to be presenting on the New Zealand leopard seals. So, does it work? So, Howard already introduced me, but my name is London Fletcher. I am a research assistant with the Orca Research Trust, and I am the youngest member for the Society for Marine Mammalogy. So, I just want to start off by saying uh, how I got into leopard seals. Uh, I began studying them in, I believe it was 2017, when I went down to New Zealand to intern with Dr. Ingrid Visser and the Orca Research Trust. A lot of the work that I was doing there was with leopard seals as it was the research that we were doing was very new and she needed a lot of help with it because every day we're not we're not seeing orcas every day so this was the work that I was mainly doing. So a little bit of le info about leopard seals. Their scientific name is Hydroga leptonix. Uh, Hydroga meaning water worker and leptonix meaning small clawed. Uh, one of the reasons that it was so uncommon and strange to see leopard seals in New Zealand, which is, for those of you who don't know, is very tropical, uh, warm climate. Uh, leopard seals are pagophilic, meaning they're ice-loving. A little bit of anatomy, so, uh, there's, will this work? Hmm. Uh, so the female anatomy, and then compared to the male, so you can see the two, uh, two mammary glands, and then not there with the male. Uh, another unique feature about leopard seals is, along with their very, very large canine teeth, uh, their side teeth are uh, multilobulated, so these teeth, uh, their main purpose is for filtering, so smaller predators such as krill and the likeness. So leopard seals are very widely distributed throughout the southern hemisphere. Uh, they're mainly in Antarctica and the sea ice surrounding Antarctica. Uh, we also may commonly see them in the sub-Antarctic islands. They're also located in South America, South Africa, and Australia. And another place we see them is New Zealand. And here are the lowest latitudes we see them. So Easter Island, Rarotonga, those kind of places. So let's start off at the beginning with these leopard seals. Uh, leopard seals, they are very curious, inquisitive animals. So whenever they were sighted, they would always come to have a look at whoever was uh, viewing them at the time. Some scary encounters sometimes. Uh, so leopard seals, just like orca, are an apex predator. So they don't have a natural predator. So they don't have an instinctual fear of humans. So they'll just swim right up to you and have a look, which is very scary. <laughs> uh, uh, so Osa, the first, uh, the first leopard seal sighted, I'll tell you more about her later, 
she would just chill on beaches, sleep. They're, they don't move around a lot, not very active. So she would just be chilling, sleeping on beaches. We have nice, respectful visitors, too. Uh, she mainly hauled out at marinas, which caused a few problems later. Uh, but So residents would usually find her sleeping, uh, which is better than if she was awake, because that could lead to lots of questionable and risky encounters. <laughs> but there was always something or somebody who wanted to pester her. No, no seagulls were hurt in the making of that video. <laughs> so after being in the Auckland uh, region for about a year, uh, she was given a name. So that is her long Maori name. I am not going to attempt to pronounce that, as I do not want to butcher it. But uh, people call her Ofa for short, and the name translates to treasured gift from our ancestors. So the Maori tribes of New Zealand they saw her rare appearance as a sign from the ancestors or a gift. Uh, leopard seals would commonly block access to other parts of the marinas. So, and if you see it here, it's, they're about three meters long and you can't just step over it or walk around it. So you just have to wait until she eventually decided to get back in the water on her own accord, which would take a while. And because of this, uh, lots of people, we were told that she doesn't belong here and she needs to go back to wherever she came from. Uh, one case of this was uh, on a, the Sailing Anarchy Forum. So it's a uh, worldwide forum of uh, sailors. And so there was lots of talk about her because she was the hot topic. And uh, there was one person who said that they were going to uh, ward her off and fight her with their pit bull. Which, for those of you who don't know, that is a very, if you value the life of your dog, because <laughs> uh, this thing, giant, wide gaping maw, and nine feet long. I don't, you're, there's not a lot that your pit bull can do. Uh, and so, with this new appearance of leopard seals, this uh, heralded a new era of research. So, like all competent researchers, we went to Google first. <laughs> a lot of the sightings that we found, though, uh, were not evident of residency. So they were seasonal, or the, the specimen was immature, or in very poor condition, or they were sporadic. So just very non-resident, and we weren't just finding a lot of births. So this sort of sparked our interest. Is this just in the Otago Auckland region, or is this around the entirety of New Zealand. So we turned to uh, museums and such, and we found lots of historical sightings. So a lot of people and YouTube. So to do more research, we founded an organization called leopardseals.org. So leopardseals.org was founded to educate others about leopard seals and keep track of sightings, reach, research, scat samples, and such in New Zealand. So their mission statement is leopardseals.org is a nonprofit organization which consists of scientists and volunteers conducting research, education, and advocacy for leopard seals in New Zealand. So this is the oldest photographic sighting that we found. We have found older ones, but this is the first photographic one. So around, it's estimated uh, 1889, so very, very old. And so we have found more since 1929, uh, and they refer to as sea leopards. Uh, 1950, 1987, 1990, and 1993. So one of my favorite things about these pictures is that you can see that they're mostly leaving, besides the first one where the leopard seal was dead, uh, they're leaving them alone, you know, not harassing them, that's nice. But they, the sightings just kept coming. We kept finding more and more historical sightings, some of them a little more concerning than others. Uh, you see the one on the far side. Mm -hmm. uh, but their occurrence in New Zealand was actually a little more common than we thought. So there's Antarctica, and this thing is not working. Hmm. Uh, so in the middle is Antarctica, and that circled region is New Zealand. So the, these are the lowest latitudes that they've been found. So Rarotonga, Eastern I Easter Island, and Pitcairn Island, but that's not very common. Uh, 
And so from Antarctica, the nearest point to the nearest point of New Zealand is about 2,500 kilometers. And then up to uh, Fangaroa, Otago, where she was found, is an additional 1,500 kilometers. That is incredibly far for a seal to swim. So leading question, why are, why are they coming up here? So some world occurrence in Chile, uh, South America, there's about 150 records, pretty considerable. And then in Australia, 77. And the New Zealand Leopard Seal Database, or the NZLSD for short, so their records span from uh, all the way back into the Maori Middens to now. There's above uh, 3,000 records, making the NZLSD the largest database of leopard seal sightings worldwide. Pretty exciting. Yeah, and so other Antar Antarctic seals, that, as they're considered, there's only 14 re records. So we have <laughs> records dating back from the Maori Minutes, so 1,200, very, very long time ago. Uh, and then we have seen in recent years a very large spike in sightings. So, uh, so we don't know what's causing these. So, but confirming that they were leopard seals were was very difficult because so the the photos were poor quality or the descriptions. So it was very difficult. But we're getting a lot more sightings. So. Uh, Things that are non-resident that we would consider would be immature. So this is a pup in very, very poor condition. Uh, so less than two meters long. There are non-adults, so less than 2.8 meters. So they're small. This one's in nice condition. Uh, and then here are the adults, more than 2.85. So sometimes three, four meters long. This is very large and scary. Uh, and so we've seen a lot of adults. So this is very common a residency. Uh, they were in poor, people were assuming they were in poor condition when we saw them, so just like uh, harbor seals that we have out here, when they are in poor condition, you can see the spine and the ribs, so you can see the ridges, and uh, very hollow, looks kind of deflated, like a deflated balloon, if you will. Uh, and so fair condition would be, you still see the dip in the head, and you can still kind of see the ribs, but the ridges of the spine are no longer there. And then this, this is okay, good condition, so there should be a nice torpedo shape to the seal. Uh, and then excellent condition, so this is what we want to be seeing. So this is OFA, uh, so we can see a nice fat, chubby seal, uh, that means that they're eating well. And so luckily we're seeing a lot in the good or excellent uh, category. And so uh, one of the arguments for them not being residents was, oh, this is uh, more seasonal. While we can see a spike in spring, the leopard seals are here all year round. Uh, or they were considered sporadic, but you can see that they see them around the whole of New Zealand over here, so more concentrated on the upper North Island. However, they're still all around. So, uh, this leads to the case for residency. One of the one of the main uh, ca characteristics of residency is having a photo ID catalog. So it's a little bit more difficult than IDing uh, IDing southern residents or orcas because we use five angles, and it's a lot harder to get those angles than you think. And currently, there is no known there's no program to uh, compare them. So we have to do it manually. So one of the uh, catches with that is that we have to be sent good quality photos where we can make out all the spots in the collage. Uh, and so slowly, we've been identifying uh, more and more individuals. So we need the face left, face right, body left, the body right, and the belly. So very, very nice. Uh, this was the very first catalog uh, that I made. Uh, when I was in New Zealand during that time. So then there were only three individuals, uh, but we have gotten a lot more. So here are a few we know. This is Ova. So she is the famous first leopard seal. There is Novi, who I am 
very proud of her name because I got to name her because for a very, very long time, like about a year or two, we thought that Nomi and Ofa were the same seal. We just thought it was just Ofa. And then when we were looking back over sightings, we realized that uh, Nomi didn't have the same scars that Ofa had. So Ofa's two main identifying scars, so they're very noticeable. She has a V-shaped scar on her mouth and then two lateral propeller marks on her back, or that's what we assume they're from. And so when we looked over the pictures, we realized, huh, there's no V there. So we came up with the very clever, uh, <laughs> no V. <laughs> There's a uh, this young male, Hajia. So he was in Fangare Town Basin for a little bit. He liked to haul out in parking lots. Uh, and so there was Joe that he was seen in Wellington for a little bit last year. And some of our researchers give seals nicknames as they ID them. So Chip and Augustus. And so uh, so we have ID'd over 70 individuals. Again, a much number much higher than we originally expected when we started this project. And so we just kept seeing more and more seals. So these are some of the ones that we find. They don't all have names. But so if leopard seals are seasonal, vis seasonal visitors, then uh, what's so special about Ofa? So there was a lot of talk about how long has Ofa been here? So we see records of her dating back to 2012. So we know this is her because she has the, uh, the, the scar on her cheek, so she, it's not a V yet, we don't know how she got the lower portion of it, but also the, uh, the lateral propeller marks. And so we can see those same scars in 2019. So, it's, so this, before her, the longest recorded residency was four months and four weeks, so that was outside the Antarctic in Bird Island, South Georgia. However, uh, Ofa has been here for seven years and counting. So she is now the longest recorded residency of any leopard seal outside the Antarctic, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, there have been a few births of uh, leopard seals outside the Antarctic, so I'm very fond of this picture, it's very cute. And so, uh, previously, we thought there had no births been recorded uh, from New Zealand or Ross Sea area, uh, but there, uh, there was a pup born, but it died shortly after it didn't make it to adulthood. Uh, we saw this with uh, other areas. However, uh, this, I don't believe that the seal has a name yet, but so it was born in 2017 and is still alive and kicking in 2019. So, uh, leopard seals, uh, they were originally considered vagrant because their occurrence was sporadic. However, like I've previously shown, we have seen them in uh, all regions and all seasons and all years. So, uh, residency is less than 15 individuals. However, we have seen more than 15, far more than 15. Uh, and so, residency is maybe we originally thought that leopard seals, maybe they're transitionary, so they're staying in New Zealand for a short period of time and then going to wherever they needed or wanted to go. However, with Ofa, we've seen her for more, we've seen her for seven years, so I think that I've considered that residency. Uh, and then there had uh, another argument was that, oh, we weren't seeing births, so they can't be resident if there are no seals being born and living. However, there are three recorded births as of now. So our data is showing a little bit of a different pattern. So this, we all celebrated about this in Niwa. So that is the New Zealand equivalent of NOAA. So the government, uh, so Ofa and her friends, Leopard Seals, they were awarded citizenship. So now they are, uh, now they're officially re uh, considered residents. So we uh, have some new next steps for research after now that they've been proven uh, resident. So we're wondering if sightings are increasing, uh, so how far do they travel? Because we've seen that they've traveled very far from Antarctica to go all these other, place, all these other places. However, we don't know if that's the max limit that they can travel. 
and we want to know uh, where leopards feel most sighted around the New Zealand coastlines. And like I've previously shown, we've seen in very recent years, not just in the past decade, a very large uh, spike in leopard seal herds. So we want to know if this number is, uh, is going to keep increasing or if it's going to steady out, but that's something that we just have to wait and see. We haven't analyzed the data from 2019 yet. And so another important research that we're doing is what are they uh, eating here or in New Zealand? So, uh, and one of the projects that we're working on now, which I'll tell a little bit about later, is uh, scat sampling. So similar to what we're doing with the southern residents. Uh, it's also being done with leopard seals. And we want to know, one of the uh, theories about why they are migrating to New Zealand is perhaps it is uh, food, it's prey-based mig migration. So one of the questions was if they are eating the little blue penguins in New Zealand. That was what a lot of people wanted to know because one of their favorite prey items is the penguins in Antarctica. Uh, I did not include it in the slideshow, but there is a uh, very gory picture of a, of, a, of a penguin that narrowly escaped the jaws of a hungry leopard seal because how leopard seals uh, kill their penguin prey is they grab it and they have a very, very, very strong bite force, the uh, strongest mammal. Uh, most people think it's a uh, hyena. That's not true because they forget about marine mammals. So what they do is they grab the penguin and they shake it. And they shake it really, really hard uh, until the skin comes off like a glove. So that's called degloving. And it is hmm, a very unpleasant sight. So I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> As you can see, you don't want to uh, be in the teeth of the leopard seal. They're very long and sharp. And so, so here's some of the uh, some of their prey that we're thinking. So, crab eater seals, penguins, little blue penguins. We're we're not exactly sure what they're eating, but we have some ideas. So, uh, we found a lot of stuff in the scat analysis so far. So, feathers, worms, uh, bones, scales for a lot of animal remains, but also seaweed and rocks. So. Funny story, so uh, the first author of this paper, my very good friend, Dr. Krista Hutman, so she went down to a beach and before she left, she found the, uh, the very bottom one right there. And so one of the reasons that she was so excited to find this was that it was, I don't know if you can really make it out from here, but it's, uh, it was chock full of feathers. So we can learn a lot what the, about what the animal is eating by collecting its scat. And so, the bones and feathers, they can be identified by sight or DNA, so it's all around very, very helpful in all fields. And so here's a very <laughs> fun story. story. <laughs> Leopard seal poops out USB drive, confusing scientists. So basically what happened was in November of 2017, there was scat collected. And so this scat was sent to Niwa to be frozen and analyzed at a later date. And so they, uh, in 2019, uh, February 2019, they defrosted, uh, they defrosted and sifted through the scat, and so they found the USB, and the USB wasn't working. Uh, and so later that month, they placed the USB in rice for a couple of days and tried it again to see, hey, maybe we could get this to work, and it did. It started working. <laughs> And so they examined it and they found uh, researchers' photos of seals and sea lions uh, in Porpoise Bay. And so eventually it was returned to this researcher. So I don't know what it's, I guess it's a testament to the strength of, a, uh, of the USBs if they can. <laughs> Since the tweet, uh, hold on, it was eaten by a seal, run through its digestive system, pooped out, collected, frozen for over a year, thoroughly washed, and it still works. That's some quality goods right there. <laughs> Testament to the strength of USBs. Uh, and so we're doing uh, a lot of research on the ancient DNA of leopard seals because we have some very old specimens. So uh, we're trying to find out if there are any uh, archaeological records of leopard seals in the greater New Zealand area. 
uh, or if there are uh, historic instances of breeding in New Zealand because that's, it's, but it's very hard to find that kind of stuff. And so uh, if there has been uh, any continuity with seals over time. So there is also, because unfortunately there have been a few deaths of uh, pups in New Zealand, so there has been a growing necropsy database. So there's a database of tissues and organs to support studies on toxicology, genetics, uh, health, and morphometrics. So while the death of an individual might be sad, it is furthering research and science, so they died for a purpose, you know? Uh, so, so the Otago Museum has been funding uh, and working on all of this. So the CT scans were done at Massey's University Veterinary School in uh, Palmerston North, North, uh, uh, and so they performed a CT scan on a leopard seal, and uh, so you got all sorts of results on anatomy and health of this individual, and it we're going to be using these results for research in the future. Uh, and so because of this, there has been a lot more research on threats because they are facing a lot of threats. So we're trying to figure out what those are and how can we better coexist with the animals because that's always the main goal when we find new animals is how can we better coexist with them. So we need to uh, find one of the main things if they are natural injuries or if they are human induced. So these are both pretty sad. The uh, natural injuries, it was with a human object, however, it was no human went and stabbed it. But we know with this one that that had to be done by humans slicing it up. So oh, what a person. What, what, I just want to know. Let's have a chat. What's, what's going through your head? This uh, was very sad. So, so uh, somebody found the seal dead and deemed it to have died because of human interference. So when they did a necropsy on it, they found that uh, the shot was both a shotgun and, uh, and also a pellet gun. So you can see those. Uh, you can see all of the, so the very small little dots, all of those, uh, Oh well. Uh, so all of the smaller dots, they are from a pellet shotgun that was repeatedly, that the weapon seal was repeatedly shot with, and then the larger ones were from a uh, actual shotgun. And all of the smaller bits are because of the bullet exploded inside the seal. So I don't know who or why they would do this, but hmm. So there was a shotgun pellet entry and 22 bullets. And so Ofa was uh, injured a few, a few months ago, and so there was a firearm suspected in it, so her nose was uh, heavily wounded, probably from a gun. Uh, there, was, there was lots of talks about human intervention, so maybe possibly capturing and sedating her and trying to uh, use medicine and try to rehabilitate her. However, uh, it healed on its own and she is still doing fine. There was no uh, infection or anything like that, so she and we are very lucky. And so there has been a lot of research on management too. So uh, talks on how likely are you to see a leopard seal, uh, what happens when leopard seals and humans are interacting, because uh, there has been a lot of good encounters where we see respectful people giving the seals their space, but there have also been a lot of bad encounters where we see people harassing the seal. And so we want to know how we can manage leopard seals in marinas. So a little more exciting news. In August of 2019, uh, we finally published our findings on the occurrence, residency, and births of leopard seals in New Zealand. So. published it with the New Zealand Journal of Marine and Freshwater Research, and it was my uh, first published paper, so I'm going to go on and So we were able to, uh, 
to speak about this at the World Marine Mammal Conference uh, 2019 in Spain. So the World Marine Mammal Conference is the largest uh, <coughs> symposium conference, if you will, uh, in the world. So it's run by the Society for Marine Mammalogy. But so there are, I think this year there were 2,500 attendees, maybe more. Uh, and so the first author, Dr. Krista Hutman, she presented on it and it got a pretty good turnout. And I was also there uh, presenting and spreading awareness about the plight of the SRKW here. Uh, because it's the issue, thanks to Telegua and all of that, uh, is more globally known. However, there are still a lot of people who aren't, aren't aware of it. So, and if any of you want to see this poster and read it, it is down over there. So afterwards, I will be there answering questions. And so, there's been a little trouble with people encountering leopard seals. So, most people think of leopard seals like this. So, this is a photo from the movie Happy Feet. Happy Feet. Uh, and this is how they are commonly portrayed in the media. So, we can see the menacing red eyes, the large, evil, bloody teeth. And so, they have a reputation as vicious, angry predators that are aggressive and will kill you. I mean, if you don't give them their personal space, something could happen, but that's not the truth. This, this is the reality of leopard seals. So usually when we see them, they're sleeping and they're minding their own business and they only have one thing on their mind and that's sleep. And so, so unlike other seals, you won't see leopard seals uh, running around on the beach and playing with each other because Leopard seals are very solitary animals, so they don't, uh, they do as little as possible uh, when they're on land. And if anything, they're a little passive aggressive, so they will give you warning signs before they end up making a move. Uh, they will give, they will give you warnings, so, so you know to, hey, back up. of the water and when they're on land their only objective is to rest so when people see them they think that oh maybe they're sick but that's not really true when we see them so what is true is that a leopard seal if you approach it it'll rarely move for anything honestly so uh, they can sleep and sunbathe for long periods of time some been recorded calling out for two days at a time just <laughs> sleeping uh, and when hauling out, they will uh, they will scout a spot, and they will sleep there, and nothing will change that. Uh, and so when they haul out, they will really be sluggish to leave, and they don't really it's, they don't like getting wet, honestly. Uh, similar to <laughs> similar to the, our local rock sausages or harbor seals, as they're better known, uh, they. They're kind of lazy, and they're, they don't really want to get back into the water. They don't like getting wet. Uh, and if you let the seal sleep, and you don't go up to it, poke it, take pictures, harass it, you'll be fine. It's not, they're not going to go out of their way to hurt you, right? And so for members of the public, there are very clear, obvious guidelines. And so just like our uh, our SRKW, they are also protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, so it's illegal to disturb, harass, harm, or injure, or kill a leopard seal. And uh, dog owners could be prosecuted if their dog were to attack a leopard seal, and those uh, prosecuted could face fines up to $250,000 and two years in prison. Uh, so some of the rules are stay at least 20 meters away. So 60 feet, keep your dogs away from them, unless you want to go to jail. Don't touch them, never touch them. That's never a good idea for any marine mammal you see. Don't, don't touch them. Uh, and don't feed them. And just overall, do not disturb the sleeping leopard seal. Give them their space and their peace. And so here is another video. So you can see, 
Just chilling. You know, having a look very cute. Let's let you know well. So, so celebrities feel really minding their own business. Uh, but in a sec, you will see this video is kind of long. But yeah, that. Don't want to do that. Luckily, this person's dog was okay. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, and the dog owner wasn't uh, prosecuted. Lucky for them. But overall, they just want space. So. How can you tell if a leopard seal wants you to move away? So the behavior we can see, how can we tell? If this is called gaping. So when a seal raises its head off the ground, so that's making a big effort, their heads are very heavy, uh, and it opens its mouth wide in the direction of you, uh, that's, that's its first warning that it wants you to, hey, please go away, look, I have teeth. Please leave. Uh, and so they will often, they one of another behavior that they exhibit is hissing. So this is a seal making a hissing sound, uh, similar to the way that a cat would. Uh, and so another sign that hey, back off. Uh, they will also vocalize, uh, vocalize, and the seal will raise its head up off the ground and open its mouth. To it's a weird sound, uh, but it's loud and it's another way to tell you to go away. And uh, another sort of last case scenario that they will do is they will uh, open, they will be gaping and then they will lunge at whoever's uh, harassing them and it's very uh, scary. So, uh, like this guy, this is an example of what you don't want to do. Uh, he was labeled a uh, a numpty, very kindly, by the leopard seal scientist. So this guy didn't get the cues to go away. So he was about from me to that court uh, with Opa, the leopard seal, and he was just taking a picture. And so she opened her mouth and gaped at him, and so he kind of took a little step back, but was still filming. And then uh, we're lucky that this man was okay because she started lunging at him, and he took a step back and then he still was filming. <laughs> they took another step back and we were telling him, hey, get out of here. And he finally left when uh, Dr. Mister came and yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> then he got the hint. <laughs> here, all right, let's... So, uh, so we're going to blur the guy for privacy reasons. So here's a video of what not to do when you see Opa. So you can see that she's making very, very clear warning signs that they are too close and that she wants to be left alone. And again, this guy was lucky that she was so tolerant as she could have very, very easily hurt him. So yeah, this, look, you know. Some of us are not blessed with the skill of common sense. <laughs> large predators, uh, a lot of people's worst fear is to come face to face with leopard seals, as they do have the capacity to kill somebody. Uh, some of you may have heard of the death a few years back of a diver that was caused by a leopard seal in Antarctica. So, But that a lot of research after that went into seeing why did this happen? How can we prevent things like that from happening in the future? And we haven't had any more incidents like that. So people have found that leopard seals would often uh, approach divers and people, so it's, and they wouldn't attack them, so let's see if this video will work. So it's an interview of National Ge Geographic photographer talking about her first encounter with leopard seal. And all of a sudden this light goes off in the back of my head and 
and I swing the camera around, and all I have is the belly of a 13-foot female leopard seal going across the screen, and bam, disappeared. I back myself up to the cliff. This is the first time I've ever been in the water with, with a leopard seal. And in the green haze of the plankton bloom, I'm suddenly seeing the shape. And it's coming closer, and it's coming closer. And there she is. And she, I've got the camera in front of me, and she is right there. Comes <laughs> to the camera. And is looking at it, I mean, doing this head roll, checking herself out in the reflection. <laughs> and then she disappears, and I think, okay, this is my chance. I, I might be able to at least, you know, get up over the wall. And I, so I quick, I scurry up the 10 feet and, uh, and turn around, and there she is again. She's <laughs> nice. So for the next 20 minutes, it was this scene of me sort of, I'd scurry up five to 10 feet, and I'd turn around, and the seal would be right there again. And I, you know, and she was, it was like she was playing. She was certainly not aggressive, but very, very curious. Right up until the moment I got out of the water, and even as we headed back to the ship, she actually followed the Zodiac back to the ship. And it's right then when I became absolutely in love with leopard seals, with their power, their intelligence, and grace. See, that's a, that's a good case of what can happen when you get in the water with leopard seals. Not all of them are aggressive, very rarely, right? And so, so it's illegal to disturb them. You know, just if you see them and you're in the water, which, yeah, go up here, you're not going to see a leopard seal. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so another one of the rules, they're very similar to the regulations with uh, our local pinnipeds. So keep your dogs on leashes when you're around them. Don't let them disturb them. Uh, and don't feed them. They don't want your dead fish. Uh, uh, Dr. Hutman has actually seen people trying to give her uh, food. You know, they were, uh, I saw a video of it, and they were going down and trying to coax her. No, she's not a cat. The that's not going to work. And so this sounds pretty obvious, right? But we've seen people attempt all of these things, so don't touch them. So uh, some protocol to follow when you're getting in the water is you need to look before entering, try to stay calm, and be slow and quiet when, if you see them, and just try to exit the water as soon as possible. But don't try to purposefully engage with them. That's something that we need to tell a lot of people. Uh, and so if this is the... We need people to report this stuff to have actually good reports, so we need the date, uh, we need the time the, that they first saw the seal, and the time that they last saw the seal, and the location detailed. You can't just be like, oh, I'm in Fangare, because that is a very large city. Where, well, where are you? Uh, so this uh, location, very. this is what we need. So Pier B of the Fangare Town Base and Marina in Fangare North. And so, something also to record is if there was scat present. So if there's not, m make sure to note that. And try to get the approximate length. I regret not putting it in this slideshow, but there is a picture from when we first saw Opa uh, measuring the, uh, so we can see she was the width of the pier. And so we were measuring it across, and there was a ruler, that ruler is no longer with us. Uh, he's lost to the waves. And so we have lots of hotlines for, if you see a leopard seal, we got a call hotline 0800 leopard. Uh, there's also, if you see if you guys want to keep up with this, I'll put it later too. So there's a Facebook page, a website, and an Instagram, and with all of those you can report uh, seals. So if you want to follow those, feel free to do that. Uh, and so that's the conclusion of the leopard seal portion, but uh, so what have I been up to? So first, before I uh, do that, so this photo is from Jeff Friedman, and I honestly think that this is the photo of the year. So we can see, it's a, a remarkable photo, honestly. 
So that is a Chinook salmon in the mouth of the killer whale. So we got it right as, I don't know what individual this is, I know it's a female. And they, she lunged out of the water and grabbed it. And so it's a very opportune photo. So I'm very grateful to him for letting me use it. And it's very, very nice. Uh, and so this is my poster. And again, you can go see it over there. Uh, so I presented this in Spain, uh, trying to educate people on a global scale about the plight of our southern resident killer whales because uh, one of the fundamental issues with the, with the southern residents is a overall lack of awareness. Of course, all the people in this room, we know what's happening and we know it very well, but the problem is, is that we aren't reaching people who don't know about the southern residents, who don't know what's happening. So this was a, an amazing opportunity in Spain to educate people who didn't know about it, who, people who can make a difference, other scientists and researchers. Uh, and also I've been getting to see old friends, uh, Dr. Fisher, who I owe a lot of things to, uh, and then Dr. Hutman. I was also able to co-chair a uh, talk, a pre presentation session at the, uh, World Marine Mammal Conference, so I am the youngest ever co-chair in the world, so. <laughs> I am the, uh, name for a lot of things. Uh, so that was a very, very good opportunity. Uh, Spain, going to Barcelona overall, was very beneficial for me. Uh, and so, what's next? So as Howard has previously mentioned, there is a rally at the Snake River Dams or around there. Uh, more information coming on that uh, on March 23rd. So it's a 23-day march uh, all the way from Portland to the Snake River Dams. So I heavily encourage you to go to that. Uh, I don't know if Howard has more information, but I have more information. So if you want to talk to me, even if you can only march for one day or maybe you can go for all 23 days. Uh, the more people that we have doing this, the better, because it really draws attention to the cause. If they see, if they see thousands of people marching for this cause, you know, it's good. Uh, so, uh, also, Governor Jay Inslee will be forced to make a decision on the dance. So, I think we are all uh, awaiting that. Uh, and so I am also working on a paper about the status of the Southern Resident Killer Whales, so I'm very excited for that. So the poster is a sneak peek for what's to come. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, all of you, for uh, listening. So uh, we'd like to thank the, uh, the Otago Museum for all their historical records and uh, for their help with the CT scans, uh, NIWA, for all of their help, uh, collaborators, and everybody who contributed to sightings. So uh, I'd also like to thank all the lovely volunteers who helped with this presentation and helped make all of this possible. And thank you to all of you for listening. Washington, so around Bellingham area. So we've been uh, trying to go to our local ports and marinas and just try to give them information and uh, other things. So my family, we're all boaters, so when we see people out on the water, we try to, hey, these are the guidelines and rules and when we're seeing people falling. But I think that Soundwatch has been doing a very good job of educating boaters on their own. So, yeah. Uh, leopard seals are very solitary and most commonly we don't really see them together. Even in Antarctica, we don't see a lot of them together. 
Uh, we, I mentioned it in the presentation, but there have been uh, a few tagged to see their, uh, their, what, where they're going, but we might do more in the future, but again, they are very, very expensive, so it's a hard project to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There might have been, but I don't know of any. Uh, anybody else? 